Windows on the World, an online exhibition for telling encounters, stories of disability, faith, church and God. This online exhibition uses photographs, drawings, paintings, poems and prose to describe what we see and the window we look through. This could be an actual window in our homes or our particular frame or perspective or experience, for example, as a wheelchair user or a voice hearer, etc. Image two, a film showing the dawn glimpsed through an open window as birds sing in the background. Image three, a prose poem by Jamie Poncia. I look through three windows simultaneously, this world, God's world, and that of my auditory hallucinations. Looking through the window of this world is neutral, perhaps a cityscape. There are some clouds for shelter, but not too overcast. Looking through the window of God's world is peaceful, strong, loving, life-giving. It is as if I'm looking at a beautiful natural landscape. Looking through the window of my auditory hallucinations is confusing. Perhaps it's as if I'm looking at the world upside down and in a whirlwind. I look through all three simultaneously. Image four, a painting of flames in reds, oranges and yellows. The following words and phrases are painted over the flames with through, you are with me, with you circled and me underlined, through fire, through flame. Image five, a film of birds viewed through a window. They come and go to feed on fat balls from a bird feeder hung on a line in a garden. The birds also drink from a bowl lain on the lawn. Image six, a poem entitled Windows into Day and Night by Rosalind Beaton. Windows open into the dawn. A pale sun eases itself above the sea's horizon, struggles to show its full glory as the grey gloom suffocates its light, leaving the hinges of the horizon to fade into the unknown. Long, close-knit lines of sea and land stretch into infinity, like a music stave where notes on the lines blend into the spaces in between, and a vast void of sky presses down, conceals the mystery within. Waves crash onto shingle, their crests brimming with white foam as they break, layering a layer of lace on the shore as the sea drags the stones scratching and scraping back to itself. As the day sighs away its presence, her windows close as evening light draws the landscape back into the pending night. A crescent moon rises, rides high as queen of the night, her freedom proudly announced. Fingertips of brilliance splatter the heavens, revealing their stories, until once again, as the tired night retreats, dawn flings wide her windows to welcome another day, and a new creation is born. Image 8 a still blue lake on a bright clear day is surrounded by a wood. The trees are reflected in the water. Image nine, a still lake ringed by trees in a park. A white tower can be seen in the distance. Ducks and geese can be seen in the distance at the water's edge. Image 10. 
a close-up image of a beautiful purple flower. Its curving petals have a pattern of striations with beautiful yellows at the centre of the flower's head. Image 11. A drawing in pastels of flowers in a glass vase. The flowers are white, blue, yellow, red and orange. The stems can be seen through the glass. Image 12. A poem by Susan Wolfe. I walk to you, and seeing me approach, you fly to me. My friends, my friends, the pigeons of the churchyard. The lockdown was a precious time of quiet. But people have returned full force and noisy, stupid, insensitive, unaware and loud. Trashing up the parks, do they notice anything around them? These are the people who stayed indoors. The absence of them made the city livable. The pigeons of London make more sense. Doves of peace they were once considered, but on reading further we learn the doves of peace were long approved for sacrifice in the absence of a fatted calf. Do we, the dumbest species on the planet, really think we are the only image of a god? Hell will be for some on crossing over into death the discovery that God has also made the pigeons in his image and the cattle and the fish of the sea. A poem written in September 2020 by Susan Mariana Wolf. Image 13. Two pigeons seen against a window are perched on the top of a chair. Behind them, pink and white flowers stand out against the backdrop of a verdant green hedge. Image 14. Through a window in a film, birds can be seen flying to and fro. It's a windy day causing plants in the garden to sway. Bowls, flower pots and branches sit on wooden slats. A door slams in the background. Image 15. A detail of the flame painting with You Are With Me painted over the flames. You is circled and me is underlined. Image 16. A photograph of a shower head and a window superimposed in the reflection from a bathroom mirror. Image 17. A naked woman is seated on the floor with her legs drawn up in front of her and these are held in her arms. The woman is viewed from behind in this painting. Her form has been outlined in white pastels and the shadows formed by her body are drawn in blue. Image 18. A view across a kitchen table with the garden glimpse through a window beyond. In this painting, the table in the foreground is uh, large with a green and white check tablecloth. A large white bowl sits on the table, while other bowls can be seen in shadows on shelving behind. Two chairs are at the far side of the table. Image 19. A photograph in which we see a grandmother and her grandson greet each other during lockdown through a closed glass door. The grandmother kneels on the paving slabs outside the house and the baby stretches his arms up so their hands meet on either side of the glass. We see the loving and radiant smile on the grandmother's face 
as she speaks to her grandson. Image 20. A picture about a mother's experience of contact with her son during lockdown. Her beloved son lives in a care home and is depicted sitting in his wheelchair at the top of the image. Below this image, care home is written in large letters across the centre of the image with a chain snaking through the letters. Around the words are other phrases, keep safe and danger. Below care home, in the bottom half of the image, are the words no entry, only access by Zoom, and a drawing of a screen from a Zoom meeting. Curving arrows run from the Zoom screen at the bottom to the sun at the top with accompanying phrases, worship survives and love gets through. Image 21, a photograph of Kay Torres holding her painting for this exhibition, which was made following the pre-conference workshop. Kay is outside her home, sitting in her wheelchair, holding up a painting of a landscape shown in three bands. A blue band depicts the sky with a bright yellow sun in the left corner. The middle band is white and populated with red trees with black trunks and branches. The final band is green grass speckled with black plants. Image 22. A second version of the image of a grandmother greeting her grandson through the screen of a glass door. In this image, they are cr crouching down in animated conversation, but still with the hands in the same space on either side of the glass. Image 23, a poem by Kate Brumby called Mind's Eye. In the frame of my mind's eye, there's no boundary to what I see. There's no restrictions of where to go, for within it I'm totally free. I wander near and far away from all I know and understand, venturing and exploring newness in the realm of an imaginary land. There I am surrounded by peace. Tranquility resounds in the air. As no one or anything upsets me, there's no rush to move from there. Rules and regulations aren't needed. Life is relaxed and also calm. Endless pleasures and blessings to prosper in and do no harm. Sustenance is time of reflection, a breaking away from COVID, in a world of justice and mercy where everyone lives and lets live. The poem was written this year. Image 24, a film of a pebble suspended from a line in front of a mirror. The pebble has the word wisdom painted on it and it rotates in front of the mirror so we see it uh, as it turns and its reflection at the same time. With the word wisdom appearing and disappearing, as well as showing itself in mirror writing. Image 25, a photograph of a drawing of a kettle in a sketch pad, which is dated April 18, 2019. Image 26, a photograph looking from within a shaded kitchen through an open back door into the light of a back garden. The image contrasts the shadows of the kitchen with the light in the garden. In the foreground, there is a kitchen chair on which a large sun hat sits. Outside is a garden chair and table, pot plants ranged along a fence, and a sunshade extending from the back wall of the house. Image 27. 
a poem called Positive Perspective by Leanne Harris. I am going to a concert, one of my favourite places to be, but this can be a mixture of good and bad for me. It's good to be there as the atmosphere is great and a lot of fun, seeing my friends laughing, singing and dancing to be done. It's a great night and everyone is on the dance floor. However, the act on stage I can sadly see no more. I feel like I have been sat all day. My body aches and I know tomorrow for this I will pay. Then things change and you can no longer go to the venue. To enjoy live music again, we must try something new. Concerts are streamed direct to my room, via Facebook, websites or even Zoom. I now have the best seat in the house and nobody is blocking my view. I can rest when I need to and for drinks or snacks I no longer need to queue. Image 28 A photograph of a laptop on an ergonomic support with its screen showing the start of a service at St Martin in the Fields. The on-screen image shows the altar in the sanctuary and the base of the east window. Alongside on screen, the comment bar is open and the early arrivals are greeting one another there. Alongside the laptop are two balls of blue wool with knitting needles and the beginnings of the item being knitted, plus a lit candle. All these being part of the preparation for and experience of online worship. Image 29. A screen grab image of the limitless ocean seen online and partially framed by the laptop screen. Image 30. A poem, Saturday After Easter 1, by Fiona Macmillan, for which we will use Fiona's own recording. Saturday After Easter 1 Suddenly silenced, there are no words, full of emptiness, within, without overcome, overlooked, overwhelmed, withstand standing for, remain staying with, withheld but not held, hold out hands shaking, wounded, hold fast even fasting given way to feasting emptily, emptied of that which is good, and left to trust in the waiting, emptiness, absence. At least the tomb was full. Knowing only the unknown at which even Jesus wept. After Easter comes what? No signs of resurrection in this new life. And yet, still wondering. Image 31, a screen grab image of a priest celebrating the Eucharist during lockdown from a room in the vicarage at St Martin in the Fields. The priest, dressed in a white chasuble, stands with raised hands behind the altar table. On the altar is a white cloth, two candles at either end and five vases containing daffodils. Through the window behind we uh, Charing Cross Road can be glimpsed. It is early morning on Easter Day. 
Image 32. A photograph looking down onto Trafalgar Square through the window of a flat in the vicarage at St Martin in the Fields. In front of the window is a row of pebbles, a cross and a candle. Through the window is the front edge of the portico of St Martin's and beyond it distanced people gathered in Trafalgar Square in bright sunlight. Image 33. A film of torrential rain on a street in central London seen from the window of a flat. As the falling rain dances on the tarmac of the road, several vehicles pass, including several cars, taxis, a motorbike and a large yellow lorry. Image 34. Words from Emily Richardson linked to her image which comes next in this sequence. Emily writes, I look at the world through tired eyes, head half raised from the comfort of the pillow. I look at the world sideways, back to front, from below. It can feel strange, unconventional tilting the head back and looking up, out of the window. Blue skies, most of the time. Image 35, also by Emily Richardson, a photograph of a window viewed from below. Above us, but part way up the window, are a row of four heads of cartoon ducks and above them is hung a twig that has been painted silver. Across the centre of the image in blue neon lettering has been added the phrase, looking from below. Image 36. Another detail from the painting of flames, with the words, through fire, through flame, painted over the images of flame. Image 37, a photograph showing a reflection in the glass at the base of a picture. In the reflection, windows looking onto a garden below can be seen. Image 38, a photograph of the Virgin and Child by Alfredo Roldalan, which hangs in the Lady Chapel in St Bartholomew's, Smithfield. The painting is partially obscured in the photograph by the sensor hanging in front of it, inserted over a patterned altar frontal and therefore also partially obscured is a short poem. Through the window of my upbringing her face is obscured. How the eyes of Ecclesia's Trinity now testes me. Image 39, a poem called Isolation Saturday by Naomi Lawson Jacobs, which we will hear in the version recorded by Naomi. On Thursday, the men's legends. On Saturday, the silence of the voiceless. Familiar stories of the unanointed on the edge. Feet cleansed and the unwashed outsiders in the street who have no wine to drink, communion with the forgotten. Comfort for those he made his own, no consolation for us, set apart from the rest who were not invited to the feast. Welcome words to see them through three days in hell, not for us, reminders. The joy to come, how not to fear. We know the absence of a word of solace of man to man, crashing under the waves of fear without the boldness of Peter, holding our breath. On Friday in the New Covenant, from a woman crying among shards of alabaster, Judas stole away with the money. To a slave who would be beaten that night, Peter denied him. It was Friday. They locked themselves away from the world. This is Saturday when you live alone. This is Saturday when we die alone. 
Try not to think about it. The leper who cannot pay for treatment you can afford to. And Lazarus flashing back to death in a months long harrowing of hell. The autistic man among the jagged tombs. So ease your minds by forgetting the trans woman fleeing pilot. And turn off the news of the immunocompromised without protection. Your bailouts from the tax collectors. The 70 year old in a hospital, one ventilator short. At least you're safe. Our existence has always been provisional on the goodwill of the men in the upper room, those who raise voices to drown out ours, closing their windows against our ugly noise down in the street. We must speak your language to be heard on this holy day. Vulnerable, high risk, child of God. And if we hold our own banquet when you shut us out, a little corner of heaven for those the king brought in, an afterthought. Will you join us? Will you throw us out into the darkness? Wailing and gnashing of teeth will probably keep us quiet. This is Saturday when you wait. This is Saturday where we live. Join us for a season. This is Saturday. May you rejoice and be glad in it. Image 40. A photograph looking through the leaded grid of a window to a brick wall beyond. The leaded grid has squares in the foreground and the brick wall has rectangles in the background. To the right, in shade, hangs the cord for a window blind. The window is shaded, the wall is in sunlight. Image 41. A large open window opens onto the rising sun, glimpsed in the distance. The open window and the garden beyond are silhouetted. Image 42. An acrostic poem by Jonathan Evans, spelling out in a central column the word through. In time of trial, when waters overwhelm, when fires consume, when walking in the shadow, you are with me. God goes with me. Your blessing is through and with. Image 43. A photograph of a window through which can be seen a poster for CPT, Camden People's Theatre, advertising new adventures in theatre. Reflected in the window is the tower block being constructed opposite. Image 44. The open window that we have previously seen at dawn is now shown in bright sunlight. The verdant green of the garden can be seen with the blue sky and white clouds above. Image 45. A poem entitled Framed Future by Kate Brumby. Juncture of opportunity to reframe the world we're in. Chance to take new direction and developments now begin. No need to be pulled backwards to a time of injustice and disrespect. We can now move forward united, true kindness and void of neglect. Are you content to return soon to how things have always been? Or would you like a better world, brighter than you've ever seen? Imagine a new lens of society through which we could look I wonder how things could change, or if, or if stunted, it won't be by much. Windows offer vision beyond, a view looking in or outward. Let's do this together, folks. Let's move on going forward. The poem was written this year. Image 46. A painting showing a black frame in the foreground, which might be a window, a fence or a gate. Behind is a riot of abstract colour 
suggesting a mass of flowers and foliage in a garden. Image 47. A photograph of large tall sunflowers seen in bright sunlight and viewed through the frame of a closed window. Image 48. A drawing in pastels of a selection of flowers with trellis work diamonds set behind. The drawing is on black paper and the different flowers are whites and yellows. White pastel has been used on the trellis to indicate flecks of sunlight. Image 49. A photograph of a scene in a verdant park with lots of trees and plants set in amongst the open spaces of grass. Our view is one of looking from bushes, flowers and foliage in the foreground towards a couple, a man and woman, sitting distanced on the grass in the centre of the scene. The growth of the natural world completely surrounds the central couple in this image. Image 50. A painting that depicts looking through patio doors to a roof garden. Figurines of cats and a kneeling woman are sit, set among flowers in vases. The yellows and browns of the colour scheme are sometimes contained within lines indicating the objects depicted and at other points extend beyond the lines to su suggest shadows and textures. Image 51, a poem entitled The Symphony by Rosalind Beaton. Banks of trees crowding upwards like curtains waiting to be drawn, opening windows to a quiet sky with swathes of greenery swinging this space, revealing secrets of winter past, of deserted streets and the long loneliness. I stand in the presence of the voices of these greens, singing their notes like instruments of an orchestra, playing the symphony. I walk in the presence of the music of trees, in the presence of birdsong and sounds of colour. I feel quiet inside as the windows of my heart fling wide, revealing the long forgotten song. That was a poem written on the 7th, 8th and 9th of July in 2020. Image 52. A photograph of a landscape with a central bridge with silhouetted arches spanning a river. The arches of the bridge are reflected in the water. The bridge is set among rolling lawns and verdant woods. A summer house can be seen in the distance. Image 53, a close-up photograph of a flowering white plant. The photograph captures the contrast between the beautiful white shades of the plant's petals and the green and the of the leaves and stems, providing support from behind to the mass of white in the foreground. Image 54. A painting in pastels of a purple allium flower. The rounded head of petals is shown alongside the large wide green leaf of a hosta plant. Image 55. A photograph of a tall exotic plant in a park. The plant is central to the image and surrounded by other planting. It tapers as it extends from the ground, reaching a point that is set against a clear blue sky. Image 56. A further detail from the painting of flames. This segment of the painting shows the phrases with, through and you are with me painted on the flames and positioned on opposite sides of the image. Image 57. A poem entitled Frameworks by Kate Brumby. Frame seen so insignificant prior to lockdown, hardly aware. Four corners held up before me on my desktop computer there. 
It never once occurred to me that this would become a window, a way of viewing the world beyond, escape from what only I know. Yet it is, and continues to be, where I look to daily, for reassurance of fellowship and a source of learning for me. I see the faces of others too, from nearby and further afield. And as time and seasons passes, friendships blossom in high yield. I picture backdrops and settings, a glimpse into another's life, and share a taste of mine too, ever mindful of being wise. Important to project tidiness, a persona of order and control, as this is how it feels here in my study within my home. Hue of screen made better by my dyslexia overlay. Gone are my strained eyes from staring at white light all day. The lights and flashes confuse as I concentrate hard to hear. My mind occupies with image, making what's being said unclear. Volume of audio is adjusted hypersensitivity to noise a pain, and the unmated distractions permeate like a jarring refrain. This frame that I now look to is not all trouble and strife. It's much more than technology and broadens my current life. I travel across the continents. I experience so many more things, from webinars to chat groups Methodist choir and Bible studyings. In time, I may grow weary of the effort to engage online, but in a nutshell, I'll say, I'm grateful for this frame of mind. A poem written this year. Image 58. A photograph looking through an open door onto a patio garden on the patio, there are lots of pot plants as well as small garden tables supporting other plants in flower pots. A variety of shades of green contrasts with the mottled greys of the patio's paving slabs. Image 59. A photograph of a path climbing a hill towards blue sky and clouds. Various couples are walking the path while keeping a distance. The path forms a vertical line from the bottom left of the photograph to the top right. Image 60. A painting in pastels of white petal balls set above a section from the back of a garden chair. Image 61. A photograph showing the centre of London as seen from a hill on the outskirts of London. The skyscrapers of central London form a line across the centre of the photograph with clear sky above and the grassy slope of the hill from which the photograph has been taken below. Image 62. A painting in pastels of seven grouped hosta leaves. The leaves are large and wide and are depicted using greens, browns and yellows. The painting is dated the 14th of May 2020. Image 63, another photograph viewing central London from a hill. In this image, the post office tower is the main iconic image of London, but here the focus is more on the immediate surroundings. The image is framed by leaves from the tree below which the photographer is standing, and we see more of the hill itself and those walking or sitting there. The view of London is again a central band and above is the expanse of the sky. Image 64. A final image of the window and garden where we have viewed the dawn and birds coming to feed. Here we are looking through the white frame of the window into the garden. A blue line is stretched horizontally on which, framed by the left hand pane, a bird is sitting. 
Image 65. A sketch in pastels of a brown clay pot containing an overflowing grass. The picture is dated April 2020. Image 66. A close-up photograph of the word love carved in wood and standing on a windowsill. The image captures part of the word and also part of the shadows made on the sill by the sun shining through the word. Image 67. A drawing of a tall table lamp with a shade. The drawing fills the sheet of paper with a focus on the shadow cast behind by the stem of the lamp. Image 68. An image of a laptop and a lit candle in a darkened room. The image on screen is also of a lit candle, this time on the altar at St Martin in the Fields. This is an image of the Maundy Thursday vigil following the stripping of the altar, which is being viewed online. Image 69. A final detail from the painting of flames, this time focused on the words with and through. Image 70. A film by Francis Burton reviewing the book The Disabled God whilst also making tea with comments in word clouds from her cat. Hello. Right. While I'm making tea, I thought I would tell you about a book that I've just read. Um, the title might shock you, actually. It's called The Disabled God. And um, it was uh, a really good read and very um, enlightening. The background to this book, The Disabled God, is that 50% of us in our lives will um, experience disability of some sort. Um, most people, it would probably be temporarily, but for some people, um, they have a condition which um, is, is sustained and, and is permanent. Um, now, quite a lot of research on disability in the past has taken place by researchers who are not disabled themselves. And there's a big movement to try and encourage people who are disabled to be the ones with the voice, to talk from their perspective and tell us what it's like. Those who have spoken seem to use the words that they feel hidden and not only that they feel hidden and different and marginalized so if people are coming into our churches feeling hidden and different and marginalized it's really up to us in the church to challenge that and involve people inclusion is great but uh, i was at a through the roof meeting on saturday and it highlighted how um participation is important inclusion is great but in order to help people participate excuse me that's the cat it's tea later in an hour in an hour the author karen Iceland, wanted to um, show what she had how she had interpreted the bible herself somebody with a physical disability who later got cancer and unfortunately died in her 40s but her legacy is, is is interesting and I have never seen Jesus in the light that she presented him. First of all, uh, she, out of all scripture, um, she focuses on Jesus meeting the disciples um, after his crucifixion. So there they are in the upper room and they meet him. And um, there's a passage that's often preached on uh, where Thomas goes up and says, let, let me feel the wounds and those wounds indeed are real and um, to all intents and purposes they're painful they're you know they're severe injuries that have been inflicted on him um, only only a few days earlier so here we have Jesus who is in complete solidarity with people who experience physical pain physical disability and, and maybe sometimes that barrier of not quite understanding, like, how do people talk about it? So what Iceland is saying is that a post-crucified Jesus is actually disabled. 
and it means that disability can be understood as a symbol of wholeness, not a symbol of imperfection. And for Iceland herself, she sees Jesus as perfect with his disability, perfect as he is. And he's presented as a survivor, not somebody who's dependent on others, but interdependent. I think from having read her book, one of the most interesting things for me is that um, I feel that Jesus sees disability as a as a medical issue at times, but also as a social issue that people can feel disabled by the by the very points of view, you know, very opinions of, of people in society. And sometimes the opinions of people in society um, make, you know, doubly disabled people. They have the condition or um, uh, whatever it is they're disabled with, but they are doubly um, disabled by the position that puts them in society. And um, it made me think about Jesus when he was um, uh, doing miracles. And he often said to people, don't tell anybody about this. It made me think that actually, yeah, do you know what? Maybe Jesus understood social disability more than we have ever given him credit for. So Iceland says that through all this, that what she had learned when she was writing is that this meant that people could fight for justice more than they do, to really fight against the injustice of people being hidden, different, marginalised. Um, she talked about Jesus' understanding that disability had you know um bright sides and and dark sides that uh there was celebration and there's also pain in disability just because somebody's disabled doesn't mean to say they have a less quality of life than somebody who isn't so that's a summary of the book the disabled god by nancy l island there we go you might enjoy reading it you might think oh, that's not for me Either way, it's fine. Bye. Image 71. Windows on the world. With much thanks to all who have contributed images or words to this exhibition. Carol Ashby, Rosalind Beaton, Lois Bentley, Alice Bree, Kate Brumby, Francis Burton, Richard Carter. Jonathan Evans, Leanne Harris, Naomi Lawson Jacobs, Sue Lawson, Fiona McMillan, Alison Parker, Jamie Poncia, Emily Richardson, Kay Torres, and Susan Wolf. Much thanks to, to Rachel Knoll and colleagues for creating this film of the works in the online exhibition.